Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Monday, July 30th. This is Gina McGuire. Over the next couple of days, we will continue to have increases to fire potential across the Great Basin. Today, any showers and thunderstorms will likely be located over the far south and be a mix of wet and dry. However, as we move into Tuesday and Wednesday, thunderstorms redevelop over parts of northern Nevada into Idaho on Tuesday, and these thunderstorms will likely be on the drier side in areas where fuels have been very critical and where we continue to have large fires. Also on Tuesday, this area of lightning may extend further south and west back into western and northern Nevada, but we'll continue to watch that. Right now, it's a little bit more likely for Idaho, but again, initially may develop into parts of Nevada. Also, a mix of wet and dry storms continue further south on Tuesday. On Wednesday, thunderstorms push north mainly across Idaho, where these will continue to be on the drier side, so we continue to have a threat for the dry lightning up across the higher terrain of Idaho. However, also windy and dry conditions push back into western Nevada by midweek. Therefore, we'll have some increases in wind, and if we continue to have additional fires and certainly activity on our large fires, fire potential will remain elevated because of the dry and breezy conditions. Otherwise, mix of wet and dry storms continue in the south and east. Looking at the last 24 hours, we did have lightning over the southern half of the Great Basin. These thunderstorms over the Arizona Strip into southern Nevada and southwest Utah produced over a half or three quarters of an inch of rainfall with lighter amounts over southern Utah. Great Basin fire activity over the last 24 hours was light to moderate initial attack with 19 new fires reported for over 12,000 acres. However, we continue to have significant growth on large fires across the Great Basin. Over the last seven days, precipitation has mainly been tied to the southern half of the Great Basin, and really even so for the last 30 days. Some areas have seen above normal precipitation, but again for that northern half to third of the Great Basin, where it has remained very dry, this is the most critical portion of the basin up into Idaho and northern Nevada and northern Utah. ERCs reflect this as well, as ERCs are above the 80th to 90th percentile over the northern half of the Great Basin and still remain below the 50th over many southern areas. However, still over western Nevada and into parts of central Nevada where ERCs are slightly lower, we still have a significant grass load which is continuing to contribute to large fire growth. If we look at our ERC charts, over parts of central Idaho, you can see ERCs are at historic highs for the time of year. And even over northwest Nevada, ERCs have continued to climb rapidly and are approaching record highs. We are also seeing these record high ERCs over the rest of far northeast Nevada into northern Utah as well. Looking at the satellite loop from this morning, you can see strong high pressure continues to dominate the Great Basin, keeping hot and dry conditions again today over the northern half of the area. We also have quite a bit of smoke in the areas where we have our large fires. Therefore, air quality will be in effect along with visibility in many of these areas that are in the clear as well. Otherwise, moisture today will mainly be confined to the southern half of the Great Basin. So looking at the weather pattern for later today, you can see on the image on the left, showers and thunderstorms over southern areas. We may see those thunderstorms creep a little bit further north up towards the northern portion of the Ely District and west central Utah as well, with drier conditions north and west. We have no high risk today as many of these thunderstorms that occur today will be in areas that have continued to see lightning. Looking at the relative humidity today, general single digits over the northern half of Nevada and Utah up into Idaho into the low teens with a little bit higher humidity down south. Today winds will generally be light to moderate across the Great Basin with some north to northwest winds over parts of northern and central Utah and general moderate or light southwesterly flow over northern Nevada. We will have gusty outflow winds near any of our thunderstorm activity today. As we move into tomorrow, this is definitely the first of more significant days with fire potential across the Great Basin. Lightning initially may develop in the morning hours, late morning, over towards early afternoon, over parts of western and northwest Nevada where we do not have high risk yet. We will continue to monitor this as the nature of the thunderstorms, whether they'll be wet or dry, and how much coverage we'll see that early is still in question. But as we move into the afternoon hours, certainly thunderstorms are expected over northeast Nevada up into Idaho, and these will be a mix of wet and dry and be moving at some speed. Therefore, high risk has been issued in areas where fuels are extremely critical. Otherwise, thunderstorms will continue further south as well into southern Nevada, Utah, and the Arizona Strip. You can see the image on the left better depicts where we're expecting those thunderstorms throughout the day on Tuesday. Again, this activity over western and northwest Nevada may start fairly early on Tuesday, and we will continue to watch that. You can see over northern portions of Ely District into central Nevada, these thunderstorms should be transitioning to wet. However, further north will be a mix of wet and dry. And you can see in the wind image on the right, 
general light to moderate flow with the exception of gusty outflow winds near thunderstorm activity. On Wednesday, we have drier air already moving back into far western Nevada, and winds may start to increase, so we'll continue to watch the Sierra front for some breezy dry conditions on Wednesday, and it will push the lightning a little bit further north and east. We don't have any high risk over central Idaho at this point for Wednesday, but we will continue to watch that as we may still see lightning activity occurring on Wednesday in central Idaho, as well as eastern Idaho and northern Utah as well, where we continue to have that high risk. These thunderstorms in northern Utah also may be starting early morning or ongoing during the overnight hours, as well as continuing to push east throughout the day. Further south, wetter showers and thunderstorms will continue. So on Wednesday, you can see again that better picture on the left of where we're expecting these showers and thunderstorms. So again, still could have some potential in central Idaho, and then eastern Idaho into northern Utah on Wednesday will be the main focus. Gusty outflow winds associated with thunderstorms expected in most areas on Wednesday, with the exception of the Sierra front where you can see those winds starting to increase with the Zephyr on Wednesday, so we'll continue to watch that area as well. Overall forecast amount of precipitation, main precipitation will be over the southern half of the basin with those wetter thunderstorms, with precipitation further north being a little bit more spotty. As we go later in the week, we have a trough of low pressure moving into the northwest, which will push in breezy winds and drier conditions to the northern half of the Great Basin. So the main concern as we go through Thursday and Friday will be windy and dry conditions in areas where we already have large fires and where we'll continue to see additional lightning over the next couple of days. Therefore, we have a pretty broad area of high risk for windy dry conditions over western and northwest Nevada and up into Idaho. Otherwise, showers and thunderstorms will continue over the southern half of the Great Basin. We may need to continue to watch parts of northern Utah on Thursday for a mix of wet and dry storms, but some of these storms may be transitioning to wet briefly. As we move into Friday, again, very dry air continues to push into western and northern areas with those breezy winds continuing with that high risk on Friday with showers and thunderstorms in the south being pushed a little bit further eastward. On Saturday, mainly dry conditions expected across the Great Basin with the only lightning remaining over far eastern portions of Utah, but still um, relatively dry, certainly with low relative humidity and poor overnight recovery, but the winds may decrease a little bit by Saturday. So no high risk yet across the Great Basin for the weekend. Similar conditions on Sunday with relatively dry weather in place and warm temperatures. Seven-day forecast amount of precipitation shows where we're expecting most of the precip, obviously the southern half of the basin, with anything further north being a little bit more spotty and tied to some of those heavier thunderstorms. The 8-14 to 14 day outlook takes us into the second week of August, showing above normal temperatures and dry conditions, especially for the northern half of the Great Basin. Therefore, fire potential will still remain very much a concern as we go through the middle of August, especially over the northern half of the Great Basin. That concludes our webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates.